OK. So we're going back. I just quickly go through for the basic of the oper operation amplifier. So you know that up uh, up M, they will get the two inputs. One go to positive, okay? One other go to the negative. And they get the name for each one, okay? If they go to the negative, you get the inverted input. They go to the positive. They will be a non-inverted and they get a one output, okay? So you can get the wanted difference between two input, that's what they call a VD. VD, that means input different wanted. They have to be equal on V at the positive minus to V at the negative. And also, the op amp, they get a very, very high impedance inside here. And also, they get the gain, okay? And impedance output, that means the resistance. At the output here, they want it to be zero. <clears throat> Minimum, okay? And the gain of the op amp, we get two different types up the gate. The one we call open loop gate. <laughs> the other one will be closed loop gate. Open loop gate means of M itself, no connection uh, external. You buy the op amp, 741 op amp, they already get an open loop gate, okay? When you get a resistor connect into the circuitry, that's what you will be get, low loop gate, okay? For the ideal op amp, Open loop gain, they want to be infinity. Okay. And that open loop gain infinity. Input impedance infinity. O. Output impedance, they get zero O. Okay. And the, <coughs> the difference between V in positive and V in negative. They want it to be zero. That's what we already done last time. <coughs> okay, so let's just try to summarize it. The IC we're using in the lab will be 741. Okay, they get on the eight pins, two power supply, one positive, one, one negative pin number four. <coughs> For practical op amp, they want to high gain. Okay, high input impedance low output impedance and the wider the bandwidth. Okay, let's see. Output wanted VR equal V positive minus V negative times the AOL open loop gain. That means V R equal V D time A O L. V D different between two input. Okay. The gain A O L open loop gain. 
Ford s e v e n f o r t o n o p e r m i c r o to uh, to hundred thousand. Output of them never higher than the power supply wanted. No matter what, okay. Output of the o p e m the maximum will be saturation wanted. That wanted less than the power supply around 1.4 volt. So we're not scared to working with the o p e m Even they get again 200,000. But no matter what, the output cannot be higher than the power supply, and the power supply for the o p e m they can be going minus eight volt up to thirty eight volt, or plus eight volt to plus thirty eight volt. They get a positive and a negative. Okay, in the lab we using will be uh, plus or minus fifteen volt. Or plus minus 12 volt. Okay, Mr. Fam, question. Yeah. Uh, in the first uh, line here, output voltage. Don't you need parentheses to enclose V in plus and V in minus uh, to make it? Oh, you my ear, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're right. Basically, you need that. Okay, thank you. And yet, last time we already did a big problem here. Okay, and make sure everyone know how to do the calculation. Okay, if you get any question, then go ahead and let me know. This uh, display here just to tell you uh, input signal. When they say uh, input signal single and mode, what that mean? That means you apply only one. Only one input to the op amp, and the other one will be routed. That's what they call a single end. Normally, different so amplifier, you get two output. If you get only one output, it will be a single ended output. Okay, and now on this one, they apply the signal to the positive and the negative will be routed. That will be single end. Okay, and different from wanted. When you apply both input into the negative and the positive, then. Those signal they must be opposite the phase. They have to be 100, 180 degree off phase. This input you get a positive here. Another one they must be negative. Okay. Otherwise, OPM can see that will be a common mode. Okay, they will be rejected. Okay, common mode two signals. Wanted of the same phase, same frequency, and the amplitude apply to the input. Okay, when equal input signal are applied to both input, they will cancel out, resulting a zero output. Okay, that they deal with common mode rejection a ratio. When the OPM look back to see the signal identical on both input, then they consider that to be the noise and they try to cancel that out. Which one is uh, inverting yeah. and non-inverting? Doesn't matter inversion and non-inversion. Only thing when you apply signal 
on the both input, they get the same signal, frequency, amplitude, okay? And the voltage, then they consider to be the noise. So I guess what I'm asking is, on the, on the differential opera amp, you don't apply the inverting or non-inverting? Differential invert, uh, op amp, right? That means you apply two input at a time, right? Correct. So that is a differential. If you apply only one input, that will be later on, they can be inverting amplify or non-inverting. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we already remind you to say when you apply drought to both input of the op amp. And if the output supposed to be zero, but they not zero, that means they get the offset voltage. Okay, so when you're doing the lab or sometime in the company, they get a problem for the offset voltage. Okay, that means they drought it to input, the output supposed to be zero. If they not zero, normally they given one register connect from pin one to pin number five. And that's why you can adjust that part until you can get the zero volt at the output. Okay? Get just the offset voltage. That's what they said. Okay, connect part to pin one and pin five. Connect both input of the op amp to the round, add just the port until VL go to zero. That's how you can add just the port to get the output to be offset to be zero, okay? Okay, now they're talking about open loop gain and low loop gain. Okay, open. Look. Excuse, excuse me. Can you see the uh, page for bandwidth? Yeah, here, bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. Explain about this bandwidth too. Bandwidth. Bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. In the next page. The bandwidth slide is actually the, the next slide after what uh, Mr. Fan. Yeah, down, down, not no, up. Not, not back, forward. Forward. Yeah. Put down, Mr. Friend. The area where you had your own writing. Your own writing. Right, the, other way, the other way. Your handwritten notes. Go to page eight. Page number eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Right eight. there, right there. Yeah, yeah, bandwidth. Okay, right there. So what the question? Only formula, I, I wanted to see the formula. What the formula for bandwidth? Yes. No formula at all until you go into specific circuitry. Basically, just, just go over that real quick. Basically, the definition for the bandwidth. That means the difference between the maximum frequency and the minimum frequency. Okay, like I said, what the bandwidth for the voice. So if you're looking into uh, communication, they can telling you the frequency for the voice will going from 10 hertz up to 10, 20 kilohertz. The, isn't the, band, the bandwidth of the amplifier itself? No, um, the amplifier, yeah. The, 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 the 3dB bandwidth? No, not 3dB, the bandwidth, yeah. By basically, I'm just talking about definition. My question is, can you tell me what the bandwidth of one kilo of sideway? A single, a single frequency? 
That means I want to get a frequency, right? Bandwidth, that means the difference between the maximum frequency minor to minimum frequency. That's what we're talking about bandwidth. Like your voice, the minimum is 10 hertz and maximum is 20 k kilohertz. That's why you can find the bandwidth. And now I asking you, what is the bandwidth for one kilohertz sideway? Zero. Yeah, you get it. But I believe too many people don't cannot get it. Okay, for one kilohertz sideway, what is the F maximum? One kilohertz. One kilohertz. What is the F minimum? One kilohertz. Perfect. So the bandwidth will be equal to zero. Then when you go into the uh, filter, then you can say, how do we calculate the bandwidth for low path filter, high path filter, or band path filter. You have to know what is the maximum frequency, what is the minimum frequency. Okay, on this page, they just, uh, just given you the picture. One they call open loop, one they call closed loop. You can see what the difference. Open loop, that means no connection at all. Closed loop, that means they get a resistor connect into the circuitry. Hey, Mr. Pham, I just got one real quick question. On VD, you said VD ideally is zero. Is that correct? Perfect. On the time. Okay. I mean, that's the ideal situation. Right. Okay. Thank you. When you're working with the op amp, that means you have to understand that the difference between two input Support to be zero. Mr. Pham, isn't that only true when you have feedback? If in the open loop amplifier, if you can go back one slide, if you go back one slide, I can I can apply any differential voltage to the input, and there's nothing to, to make it go to zero, right? If I have no, no, no. They on the left different between positive and negative. But I, if I have if I have a voltage V in that's not zero, then uh, then V out will either be even for a really small voltage because of the gain V out will either be plus power supply or minus power supply. No, right? you're talking there's, no, there's nothing that there's nothing that forces V in to be zero in the open loop configuration. It's only in the closed loop where V D is forced to be zero, right? Yeah, these are the different right here. Yeah, yeah. That means different between this input and this input. Right, so the negative input becomes a virtual ground. In this case. Right, right, yeah. Okay. But it's not in the other thing. Okay, now. If you're looking on that one here, I just try to explain to you when you're looking into that, you can understand. How oh, cool. That's okay. Now, you can see Okay, you can see this is open loop gain. This is open loop gain, so the value will be very high. Okay? Uh, 
100 dB. Now, this point they call a critical frequency. At this frequency, if you're going down, I think you got two things superimposed upon each other, Mr. Fam. So you probably need to erase something. Yeah, that's what I tried to erase them. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I still uh, get a problem. Okay. Okay, minor 3 dB point right here. That means this is a cut-off frequency, okay? Normally, they only calculate, they only want the signal, okay, in the bandwidth. So if you get a cut-off here, then the bandwidth will be from here to here. Okay, so if you're looking on this one, what the bandwidth for the display. What is the bandwidth? 10. Right here. You going down from here, you get 10 power up one mean 10 hub. 10. Okay. 10 hub. The thing is, this is a frequency for hub. Okay. So basically, when the gain it's too high, okay? Then basically your band cannot do anything. Okay, do anything for 10 hertz bandwidth. So in order to get the higher bandwidth, then they have to reduce the gain. I given you an example. I picked right here. So now what the bandwidth Kilohertz. 10 power up 3 hug. That means 1K hug. Okay. However, the gain now going down to 60. Okay. So if you want more bandwidth, then the gain must be reduced. Okay. And at the point right here, they say you need the gain. What that mean for unity gain? What gain equal? Zero. Now. Zero dB. Zero dB. Zero dB, but the gain equal? One. One. Input. Okay. One. Yeah. The thing is you take 20 lock up one, you get zero dB. Okay. okay. Gain equal to one, that, that tells you what? Input, output will be the same. That means you will get no loss. Okay? If you want to talking about dB, you take 20 lock up one, you get zero dB. Zero dB, that means you not lock anything. Okay? 10 volt coming in, 10 volt coming out. Now, inverting. Inverting amplifier, uh, op amp. Okay, so inverting means the input signal V in here connect to the negative. Okay, and the other input V1 connect to round. So we already said the difference between. V1 and V2 is zero. So V1 zero, then V2 here also be zero volt. Okay. The difference is when the input apply the current flow in here, okay, they can be going down. They can be go into up and they can be going up. 
first thing they cannot going down. The thing is they get the same potential. Okay, zero here, zero here. Then they cannot go into the up end. The thing is high input impeded inside. So they will be go into this way. Go out here. That go to nine. And you know that will be pointy and they will be negative here. So the difference between a zero volt on the negative and a zero volt and the positive. The route on the po positive here, they call physical route. That means you need the wire connect from positive input to the route. However, on pin number neg on negative input here, the zero volt, but they still allow the current to flow. That's what they call a virtual route. Remember that. Okay? That is a virtual route. Okay? Now, this is more clear. So, if we want to, you know, prove the formula, then you can see we calculate here. One going here, they going up here. And this positive, this negative. And this negative, they're telling you at the here, they have to be negative. And on the register, 5K here, one side negative, the other side must be positive. Okay, so if you want to calculate the V out, you can use V out times the load current here times RL. Okay, V out you can calculate by minus, okay, uh, I L time I L. Hey, Mr. Pham, I thought you said there's no current going through R L. How come no current? Didn't you say something about uh, a sink uh, current or the the current don't flow through R L or something yesterday or yeah. the last time? I'm asking if, if you could explain what happens with uh, the area where RL was at. That's what I said. The current IL here, right? You see that? Yeah, what happens with that? No thing what happened. The thing is on this side, you get a negative. The other side, you get a positive. The current have to go in from a positive to a negative. So it's just Ohm's law, right? Just Ohm's law. You say I, thought, I thought be... the last I thought the last time we, we had it on Monday, I thought he said something about the current can't go through there and it something about a sink uh a sink current or I can't make I I think he said the amp the amplifier itself can source or sink current to make up the difference between um yeah, that's what... IF and IL. That's what I'm going to talk to you, okay? However, I, you say no current IL, I'm not saying that. Okay. Okay, now, if something, you know, confusing, telling me, you get a positive here, you get negative here, you know how, why? Why you get positive here? I, I don't think I don't think we can see where you're pointing, Mr. Pham. What? I, I I can't see where you're pointing when you say positive and negative. Use I'm your sorry. pointer. Use your pointer. Okay, here. Party negative. Mm -hmm. How come? Well, it's because well, the, cur the current is flowing, is flowing from the, come out the, the, Go ahead, I'm this sorry. Is a, this is a current I flow, right? Right. When they come in, they positive. They're leaving. 
negative. Right. That's all the basic resistance in the DC. Okay. So this current they go into here, they go up to this point. Now, another thing you must know, you get a negative here, then you must be get negative here, right? Okay. The thing is this, just a wire. So they coming out here, then you get a negative here for the load here. The other side of the load, they must be positive. Okay. Okay. So when they going to this point, they cannot going down. The thing is going here will be going from positive to the negative. So that's why they be go into the up air. Okay. Okay. In this case, we said uh, op amp sink current. That means they put the current in. Okay. And also IL, they go up here. They cannot go up to the here. They must be going to the op amp also. Okay. So if, if you want to calculate the current of the op amp, you have to add in, okay, the current I and the current IL. Both will be go into the op amp. So just one last thing, Mr. Fan. Yeah, go ahead. So, so, so I so IL goes up but not down. Right. In this case, they going up. All right, thank you. The thing is you say positive here, negative here, they must going up. All right. So, so, Mr. so if uh, RL equals RF, then I0 no, no. would I'm be zero, equal. right? I am not equal to RF, but they will be parallel. Change the value of RL to 1.5K. IL can be anything. Well, it could be I, I L is V out over R L, right? The minus V out over R L. You say V out equal minus I L time I L, right? R L times, yeah. Okay. So now what I'm saying is I L value and R F value doesn't matter. I L basically in the practical, they just a speaker in the system. No, I'm, I'm just asking what, if you, if in this circuit, if you change the value of RL to 1.5K, what happens to the value of I0? Okay, depending on first thing, you need to calculate the VL first. If you get a VL, you change the value of RL, you change the current for the IL. And output of the op amp will be equal current I, adding into current IL. We cannot tell you the, when you change the value of IL, then what the current of IO. We have to get to, to the formula, okay? How do we get the VL foot? Vn. Okay, now. Times minus Rf over R, R1. Yeah. Now, okay. Hold on, okay. Vr will be measured from output here to the route. Right? So that's why you get the negative. So that's why minus Il times Rl. However, we cannot use this formula to calculate the VR. The thing is RL will be a lot, okay? And they can be vary. So we have to find it other way to doing calculation. Now I can say VR also can be, VR will be a voltage measure from the output to the route. So they can be measured from here up into here. 
output to the round. Okay, so they can be equal minus i time rf. That's the same v out. However, it does depend on the load. Hey, Mr. Family, let me get this right. That that first V out was V out equal minus I L times R L. You said not to use that to calculate V out. Is that correct? Right. The thing is, you do cannot using the load. Okay. But the second one, but the second one that you just wrote, that's the one that we should use to calculate V out. Right. That is. Okay. All right, thank but you. But rather than just memorize the formula, maybe it's better. I mean, v out is the cause of RL, of, of IL, right? Because of V out is controlled by VN and the ratio of the resistors, RF and R1. Yeah. So V out is the cause of the current through IL, right? IL is not caused by, I mean, IL is not caused by RL. IL is caused by V out. Yeah, they can be dependent on VL or IL. But we're not talking about, you know, the load. The load vary who know what value. In here, you can know value of the IF. So is it, is it you agree with me, VL equals minus I times IF or not? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, what I equal? E in uh, divide by R1. V in divide to R1. That's correct. The thing is you get a row here, right? And you get one only one sort and only one resistor on law. Okay? So now instead say I here, I can say they will be equal minus V in divide R1 time I have. And now, if you want to get the gain, okay, I can say um, A C L. That means the closed loop gain. So you have to take V out, divide to V in. Okay, then you can get minus RF divide R1. So this is the gain of the of F. If you get the input, okay, and that's why you're able to calculate the anything you want in here. Now in here, let's see. On this one, telling me what is the gain? Minus 10. Minus RF, that means R3. Divide 10K R3. over 1K. Okay, minus 10. What we out? Minus 10 volts. Now, they are asking current I to the R2 resistor. One volt divided by 1K is 1 oh, milliamp. Wait. One milliamp. What the load current? That means you take the 10 divide to 10, right? 10K, 10 volt divide to 10K. Minus 10 volts. Yeah, minus, minus 10, 10. However, if you want it, I can do for you. The current cannot be negative. 
Okay. Now so I. So you just do it and take the absolute value? No, 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 not, not that me. The code doesn't go this way, right? Right. Okay. So the code on I L equal the difference between here and here, right? At this point, you get minus 10. And that's going to get zero. So they can be zero, minus to minus 10, and divide 1, 10 K. So that's why you get 1 milli M. Minus, minus means you get positive. Okay? okay, so that will be one. And you add them up, they will be two. Whoa. Remember, current cannot be negative. When they see the negative means you have to change the polarity. Instead, they go left to right, now they go right to left. Hey, Mr. Pham, that last one where you got two milliamps, that's the current that flows from, from, from the area of V out in back into the op amp. Is that correct? Yeah, that current here. Yeah, right, 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 right. They put the current into the op amp. That's what they call sink current. Okay, any question on this one? Thank you. Just a moment, just a moment. Thank you. Okay. Now, for this circuitry here, okay, you tell me quickly, one, two, three, okay. Go ahead, tell me. One is minus three. So 4.5, K divide 1.5, what you get? Three. Three. Minus three. Minus three. That will be three, right? Three or minus three? They must be mm -hmm. minus. The formula will be minus RF divide R1. V out will be 3.6. 3.6. times 1.2. Don't put negative, okay? This is the AC. Only telling you input is positive, output will be negative. They will be 180 degree of phase. For DC calculation, you can put a negative, but the AC calculation, you have to tell them if they in phase or they will be out of phase. Go back, Mr. Pam. The, the current to uh, R1. Yeah, R1. Okay, go and go to R1. 0 0.8 milliamps. You take 1.2. One pick to pick divide one point five K. How many? Zero point what? Zero point Okay, there they are, non inverting. How do we know that a non inverting? When the input apply to the positive, so that will be non inverting. 
Input applied to the negative, that, that will be inverted. Okay? The fourth thing, we can see here, this is the voltage you wanted. Okay? That will be a V in. Not this guy, okay? Not this one. The input have to be correct, connect directly to the positive. Okay? So how do we calculate this voltage at this point? V in. You know that register and this register is voltage divided Divide. law. Okay? Mm -hmm. If they get a 1K and a 1K, automatically I know they will be a half of 5 volt. So 2.5. They will be 2.5. So okay. 2.5 is the input voltage, correct? Right. They must be connect directly to the positive. This guy not connect into the positive. So 2.5. In your formula, Mr. Fan, what is V1? In the formula, let's see. It's the battery, it's five volts. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. I got you, I got you, I got you. Okay. Now, I get 2.5 on at the V in here. Okay, if you confusing or still not quite follow it, let me know. The difference between this input and this input will be zero. Okay, so 2.5 on here, what the voltage here? 2.5 minus 2.5. That also we can say V E, right? Mm -hmm. 2.5. Okay, so now you get 2.5 volt here, you get down here, that's why you can get the current flowing. I. Okay, and we try to find out what, where that current I coming from. First thing, they cannot coming from here. They cannot coming from here. You know why? Virtual ground. No, we don't have virtual ground here. Infinite input impedance. No, what I'm saying, you see current I, I asked the question there, is it as I coming from here or coming from here? It's coming from the feedback path. Right, but how come this is not coming from here? Who telling me? It's 2.5 to 2.5, just a wire. Exactly, they get the same potential, right? They cancel each other out. Same voltage, current cannot be flowing. You get 2.5 here, 2.5 here. No way the current can be flowing. They have to be the different. So they're telling me the current will be come from, from here. Okay? And this current go this way. And you know, positive here, negative here. And a positive here, you know, you get a positive here and then you can get a negative here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the current will be flowing from here, go into here. You can do calculation for I, easy. Mr. Mr. Fan, we can't, we can't see your pointer again. We can't see where you're pointing. You made the pointer. Okay, the yeah. current I flow here, right? Right. They go this way. Right. Okay. And basically, this is positive here, 
and they start to be the positive. So the curtain basically, they will be coming out from the upper end. Okay, one go up here, one will be going down here. In this case, they call a source, source current, okay? So the op amp is sourcing the and feedback the current, current and, and the load current. Yeah. In this case, the current will be sent the current out. So if you want to calculate the current, then what the current equal? I equal. Okay, 2.5. Divide R1, 1K. You get 2.5 milliamp. Okay. Now, I want to calculate the V out. V out will be measured from output here to the route or from the here to the route here, okay? So we're not using the load to doing any calculation. So that's why VR will be the voltage drop across the RF plus the voltage drop from R1. So VR will be equal I RF Blood I R one. Okay. That is the V out. Okay. So Mr. Fam, if you take away RL, V out doesn't change. You take away that one. I L doesn't matter. V out stays the same. Yeah, the formula not depend on IL. You cannot use the IL into the formula. The thing is, load will be vary. They can put any load they want it. Okay, so now what I'm saying here, V out will be made from here to the route here. Okay, that means they will be uh, equal to the voltage drop across RF, okay, adding to voltage drop across R1, okay. Now let's see, I can get, no, that one. Um, let's see, I need the one pair. So I can write down. Date pay fourteen. Okay, I try to draw that one. And you get the V in. And that one, you can get the one RF here. And another one will be here. That will be R1. That will be RF. That will be V out. Okay? So we can get the current flow here. I, and they will be going from here, I, okay, so V out will be equal, uh, V across 
across the RF adding V across the R1. Okay, RF will be I time RF adding I time R1. Okay, so they will be I here time RF plus R1. That is the V out. Okay, and V in. Okay, basically, this is the V in here. Okay, let's see. Where, what I equal? I equal V in divide I want. Then you substitute into the formula. You can get V out equal I, then that will be equal V in divide R1 time R plus R1. Okay, then V out divide to V in. That given you the gain A C L. Okay, so they will be equal. 1 over R1 time R F blood R1. Okay, finally, R1 here, okay, divide R F to R1, divide R1 to R1, you get 1 blood R F over I want. This is the final formula. Okay? This is the final formula to calculate the gain for non-inverting amplifier. For this gain never less than what? All the time they have to be higher than one. The thing is one adding something else. So that's what I want you to memorize the name for the inverting amplifier. If you are able to calculate the uh, formula like I did it, then you're okay. But you don't have to, okay? When you're looking into the circuitry, you know this is the inverting or non-inverting. If they want to calculate the gain, then you're able to calculate the gain. And if they want a V out, then you calculate the V out. However, for non-inverting, input output will be in phase. Okay. Okay, that one done. Get one done. Okay, now try to see on that one. Did a also inverted, non inverted, sorry. The thing if we in here connect to the positive, and uh, this will be the RF, and this will be R2. Okay. Input V in, connect to non-inverting. Input of the op amp. The closed loop gain will be one plus RF over R2, okay? Where RF is the feedback register. Input output is in phase. Okay, now if you want to calculate the gain, ACL will be one plus RF over R2, okay? 
if they given the value here, you able to doing calculation, okay? And if they given you the V in a minus 2.5 volt, you can calculate the V out, okay? And now the question A, they want to know what the current to R2. That means they want to get the current here. I say I R2. How do we calculate that? V in over R2. If you want to calculate the gain, that is easy, right? Will be equal to my E in equal to one. Blood RF over R2. Okay. And you already know the RF in 1K. R2. 1.5 get, then you can do calculation. You want to calculate the VL, you take a CL time VE. V in, they given to you a minus 2.5. The last question I want to ask is how do we calculate the current? Go to R2. I R2 equal what? It's V1 over R2, but V1 uh, equals V in, so it's uh, V in over R2. No, that's not. Yep. I'm telling you. VL divided by ACL? No. Okay. I asking you. What the wanted here? V in. Perfect. I think that's what I said. 2.5, right? So you get a round here, you get a voltage to minus 2.5 here. That's why you can arm law, right? I uh, to equal zero minus V in the phi uh, two. That means zero minus minus 2.5 divide uh, to 1.5 K. Hey, Mr. Pham, just one, one last time. I, I just missed it again. Uh, the, where did the zero come from? Okay, the thing is, when you see the voltage here, you get a minus 2.5, right? Right. Go run must go this way. Right. Right? Okay. So that's why go run when you got calculate the wanted across this one, across here. Then you have to get a difference between zero and V in. So you must subtract with zero, then minus V in. Okay. okay? The zero comes from ground then. Right, zero one here. Okay. If, if you're not using this way, you can take minus 2.5, right? Divide 1.5K, you get negative current. Okay? And we said we don't have any negative current. When you draw this way to calculate the current, and you get the current negative, then that telling you current will be going this way. Opposite.
Okay, go ahead quickly telling me. Okay, for this circuitry, for this one, okay, answer number one, two, three. This will be a non-inverting. So what the gain equal? Remember, one, blood, I have to k divide 10k and if you can to calculate the v out v out equal acl time v in So the gain is 23. The gain is 23. Yeah, the gain is 23. Yeah. I'm not calculate for your life. Do it. They given you a V in equal to volt pick to pick. So that means you get two volt pick to pick. And here also two volt pick to pick. Okay. So the current. I, I, uh, I, I, equal to volt, pick to pick, divide, uh, I, I. When you see the open, need to recognize inverting, then inverting, or following a different sort of amplifier. Okay. Next example. Let's say the term in value I have required to produce closed loop voltage gain in minus 100. So if you're looking on the circuitry, a second one here, they will be a inverting amplified. The thing input connect to the negative. And now you know the formula for the gain. A C L equal minus uh, F over R1. Okay. And that will be equal a minus a hundred. So now you already get the R I R one right here. You able to calculate the R F. So the R F will be equal R I time hundred. Okay. So I 2.2 .2 times 100, whatever you get. Okay, any question regarding to this two example? Uh, not uh, regarding this one, but could you please go back one slide just to take a picture? Go back here. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Fan. 
No problem. Okay. You want to be a technician, you have to study. Myself, I cannot help, okay? I try to figure out the way, try to help you to understand. Okay, quickly, otherwise, we run out of time. They say they have not much thing to say. You need to get an amplifier. When you say this, RPM connect this one. Output connect to the negative, input apply to the positive. No resistance at all. They call it unity gain amplifier. Unity gain amplifier means the gain equal to one. Okay, input output the same. So that's why they get a different name. This can be a buffer amplifier, isolation amplifier, or follower amplifier. And the gain equal one. You understand the buffer amplifier means input output the same, but they can be increased the current at the output. Okay. Isolation amplifier. Isolation amplifier, that means they are isolate between input and the output. I think a high input impedance. So that's why inside any power supply, you will see this circuit. I give you an example. You get a 15 volt coming in here. And the output supposed to be 15 volt. However, for some reason, the output here be sorted to round. Okay, what happened is you don't have any more output 15 volt. However, if not cook the IC here, the thing is they get the high input impedance. They isolate between in and out. So any power supply must get this amplified. Otherwise, if they not they not isolated, you sort 15 to round, they cook it right away. Okay. And also they get another name, follower. That means output following the input. Input, one output, one input, two output, two, nothing yet. Okay. And last one here, summing amplifier. Now you get the this amplifier connect three short V1, V2, V3. If the value of register the same, then you can calculate by minus V1 plus V2 plus V3. That's the call a summing, summing amplifier. That's just a formula. Okay. That one here should be, let's see, next one. Okay, next one calculation here. And gain bandwidth product, we don't care here. Let's see, oh, it's still more. Okay, so next time we still, we have this thing, okay? Now, uh, I'm talking about slew red. The thing that this one will be using in the, the quiz today. So that's why I need to make sure clear for your guys. Okay, the maximum rate of gain of the output voltage in response to a step input voltage. You understand what that means for step input voltage? What is a step input voltage? It's like an instantaneous change in voltage, like closing a switch. Okay. Step input voltage. That means the voltage going can from one voltage to the other voltage. Okay. 
that's what they call a step. In this case, you know, we in zero here, they going from negative voltage jump to the positive voltage. That's it. Okay. And you can see the circuitry here. Okay. This is a circuitry what? What the name? Voltage follower. Unity game. Why? Follower. Unity game. Right? That means input output will be the same. Now, what happens is when the input they going from negative going up to positive. However, the output, if they doing a good thing, that means they can be exactly the same. Output also going negative to the positive. Okay, right away. However, that's not working that way. You can see now take them a little time okay to go to the this level this the delta t okay from here go to here that means take a certain time so they can go up to the maximum here so step input wanted and the resulting output wanted so that's what they talking about slew red by definition slew red, you can take a delta V out, okay? Divide to the delta T. This is a time, okay? So where delta V out equal plus V max minus to minus V max. That means from here, go up here, mm. okay? The unit of slew red is one per microsecond. Try to see that one. The output wanted of a certain op amp appear as so in the following in response to a step input, they want to know the slew rate. Okay. So now you can see the output they will be going to the maximum this way. And they can say from here to here a one microsecond, delta T. So delta T in this case, they will be calculated from 10% of the minimum to the 10% of the maximum. If you get a 10 minus 10 volt, 10% of minus 10 volt, Okay, you get minus nine. And the same 10% of the positive here, you get nine. So from minus 10% to a minus 90% here, the time will be delta T. Okay, in here, it says so the upper limit is plus nine volt, lower limit is minus five, nine volt. The slow red is slow red equal delta V out, okay? Delta V out, that means the difference from here, okay? It will be nine volt minus to minus nine volt to get 18 volt per microsecond, okay? And when a force is applied to op air, output wanted to go from minus eight to plus seven in 0 0.75 microsecond. What is the slew rate? That means they can go in minus here, okay? Minus eight to plus seven. And they give it to you the time, 0 0.75 microvolt. So they want to calculate the slew rate. Slew rate will be equal delta V out. Divide to delta T. Delta T will be 0 0.75. Only thing is, they going from seven 
minus eight point two seven volt. Okay, then you need to doing calculate draw that picture. Okay, that will be a zero right here, and this is a seven volt, and that will be a minus eight volt. So basically, they going from <sighs> here into here, and the time will be zero point seventy five. Okay. So that's why you can calculate the delta V out. That means seven minus to minus eight. Okay, that's why you can get 15 volt. Okay, 15 volt divide to uh, 0 0.75. Is there one question? Uh, yeah. This property is slew rate uh, is is uh, for which kind of application? Where where is important no, to? You? No, it's not. Better slew rate. You understand me uh, for the op amp. Okay, for the op amp here. When you apply the input, this one. That means okay. Okay, and the output you want they supposed to be. Same thing. Right away, they can go up. However, they due to the delay inside of M. So they're not going this way. They have to be going this way. Okay, okay. So basically, it's to describe temporal uh, pr properties of, of this operation amplifier. Right. The, that delay that you're drawing in there. Okay, got it. Thank you. And if I may, as a practical matter, this, this is important in applications like switching circuits and timing circuits, where if the input yeah. is uh, transition is delayed, then you have uncertainty in the timing because the output is, is right. limited by the slew rate. The thing that you want to grow, they have to grow right away. Okay, don't have to wait. But depending on money to pay for the op amp. Okay. If they get a good slew rate, that means cost more than normal. That's it. Okay, Mr. Sam, can you run the test today? Okay, let me go ahead and turn on the test. Okay, I stop that one. Okay, so well, let me see. Okay, look like a test quiz. The... Are we running nine or are we running 10? 10, not nine. Okay. Next week, I will be reviewed both nine and 10. Okay. Let me see. Did I have it in my. All right. Uh, let me open up that. Okay, so quiz 10. Okay, so go quiz, open up. Okay. All right, we're gonna go to click on share, share screen. All right, we're gonna click enable. Okay, let me check this one real quick, just to make sure. Okay, so that looks good, that one looks good, that one looks good, that one looks good. Okay, so I had to fix this last one. Okay, now it's fixed. Save, okay, so we're gonna be running animation. Okay, so we're gonna go slideshow. Okay, we'll start beginning. Three minutes.
It's number 10, it draw. I'm sorry, Mr. Pham, what'd you say to do with number 10? Yeah, I saw it look like it's wrong. The thing is, the answer would be what? Why they said that should be a DB vote. So that's why. So so ignore number 10 or what? I ignore number 10. Okay, thank you. So give it your guy bond note on number 10. Should we account for round off error? Number 12 is really close. Choose the one. Say again, Sam. Choose one to what the closest answer. Yeah, no way you can get exactly. Normally, Joy, quick answer will be closed. So this question also was on the, uh, it was on the uh, quiz number nine also. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked. Nine is 20. Get two chances to mess it up, huh?
The timer may be wrong. I will fix that later. I uh, you have, yeah, you have another 30 second. Uh, yeah, 30 seconds. One thing I don't understand when I try to run it, they work perfect. Yes. When we try to run on online here, at least I get a one, get a problem. Yes. I see the point. Okay. The same thing. Yes. Okay. Well, that's it. Time's up. Okay. Can you give them the bonus on number 10? Okay. Yes, sir. I will give them the bonus on 10. <laughs> okay. That's it. Uh, so make sure you do it and, and make sure you upload to the website. Make sure it gets uploaded before 12 noon tomorrow. Okay. Okay, that's it, folks. Okay, so right. see you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. You guys go home. If you're already not home, walk outside and walk back in. <laughs>